So we have seen what a single bit in memory looks like. Now let's see how the whole chip is organized. We said already that we have these word lines that activate cells. We have a number of word lines. And the thing that decides which word line gets activated is called a row decoder. What we give to the row decoder is some bits of the address that tell it which of the word lines to activate. It can only activate one word line at a time. So this is a real decoder. You give it a number, it activates a line that corresponds to that number. In memory, we call this row address. There is also a bit line here. And if you remember, a memory cell exists at every intersection between this bit line and a word line. So what the word line does is it connects this cell, this cell, this cell, or this cell to the bit line. So by supplying, let's say, two bits of the address, we choose which of the four bits would be outputting on this one bit line. Of course, there are more bit lines than just one. And this, for example, is a 16-bit memory. It's a 4 by 4 bit memory. Four bits can output to the same bit line. And there are four bits activated by each of the word lines. So when we select the row, four bits get output out of here. Now, bit lines are very long. And as we said, the cell is either a relatively weak SRAM cell, so it will slowly pull the bit line one way or the other, or it is a DRAM cell that discharges a relatively small capacitor into this relatively long bit line. If we discharge a small capacitor into a long bit line, the voltage on the bit line will change, but it will change relatively little. It will not change all the way to the level that corresponds to a 1 or to a 0. If we have a weak cell, we don't want to wait for that cell to raise the whole bit line one way or the other. This is why the bit lines are connected to a device called sense amplifier. What it does is it senses the small changes on the bit line and amplifies them. So it's really helping the cell raise or lower the voltage on the bit line. And it has relatively powerful circuitry for each bit line, so it's significantly bigger than a single row of cells, but you only need one of these at the end of the bit line. You don't need one of these at every cell. So you have relatively small and weak cells, and you have this beefy thing here that is helping them raise or lower the bit line. The signals that are produced by the sense amplifier, which are now correctly one or zero bits, go to a storage element called row buffer. The row buffer stores the correct values that we read from the whole row of cells. So in this case, the row buffer will contain four bits because that's how many bits are there in the row. The row buffer feeds the data it latched to another decoder that is called the column decoder. This decoder selects the correct bit among these four, let's say, using the column address, which is another part of the data address, and it outputs a single bit. If we want to build something that has more than just one bit of data for each location, we will replicate this. So we will have, let's say, two of these, give them the same row and column address, and now they output a two-bit value. 